On August the 15th, 2024, a Russian long-range supersonic missile carrier bomber Tu-22M3 crashed in the Irkutsk region of the Russian Federation. And there will be more such cases, says Ukrainian aviation expert, deputy director of the company producing electronic warfare equipment, Anatoly Krapchinsky. A Tu-22M3 plane crashed due to a certain technical malfunction. This will happen more often in the future because active use of planes requires high-quality maintenance. And Russia does not have time to do it, he noted on the air of the telethon. The expert added that the weak point of the Tu-22M3 bombers, like all Russian strategic aviation, is the engines themselves. Of course, there are problems with the auxiliary power unit and with certain other elements, but the most painful spot for any Russian aviation is the engines, because the most powerful engine manufacturer in Soviet times was Motor Sik, and the most powerful developer was the Ivchenko Progress Design Bureau. All of this remained in Ukraine. Kraptinsky emphasized, The experts said that now Russia can neither build nor properly repair engines, which are, for example, on strategic aviation. This leads to the fact that the planes begin to have certain problems with engines, their ignition. All of this consistently destroys the plane. At the same time, this problem is not new, but Russia cannot solve it. Because of all of this, we will still see plane crashes and air disasters or prerequisites for this with emergency landings, he believes. Krapchinsky noted that Russia cannot produce strategic aircraft at all, but only repairs and modernizes the old aircraft fleet. If we talk about tactical aviation, it should be noted that the Russians can actually still build and they can produce about six Sukhoi aircraft a year. He explained, the aviation expert added that Ukraine destroys many more aircraft. However, these are still threats. So more strikes should be made directly at Russian aviation production facilities. He noted that Russia was actively developing aircraft factories, building new workshops to increase production capabilities. At the same time, this was not the construction of some underground hangars because the Russians were not at all prepared for the fact that there would be strikes on the territory of the Russian Federation. And since 2003, they have been actively scaling up the production of offensive weapons. Recall a Russian Tu-22M3 missile carrier bomber crashed in the Irkutsk region of the Russian Federation. The occupiers often use these aircraft for strikes against Ukraine. The Russian Defense Ministry confirmed the plane crash. The preliminary cause of the crash is a technical malfunction. Russian authorities also claim that all four pilots of the bomber, who managed to eject, survived. Russia is withdrawing some of its troops from Ukraine in response to the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region. The Wall Street Journal writes about this, citing sources among American officials. It is noted that these actions indicate that the Ukrainian armed forces raid into the Kursk region has provoked a forced regrouping of Russian forces. The publication's interlocutors noted that the U.S. is still trying to determine the significance of this step by Russia and did not specify how many troops Russia is transferring from the Ukrainian front to Kursk. His assessment confirms the statements of Ukrainian officials that the surprise operation in the Kursk region diverted Russian troops from Ukraine. Meanwhile, Politico Europe also reported, citing an official in Kiev, that a relatively small number of Russian troops had been withdrawn to respond to the incursion into the Kursk region. U.S. officials told the magazine that it was still unclear how many troops Russia was pulling out of Ukraine. Against the backdrop of the Ukrainian operation in the Kursk region, the Russian Federation has begun to withdraw units from Ukraine. In addition, the demilitarization of Kaliningrad has begun, reported Lithuanian National Defense Minister Lorinas Kasiunas. The minister added that the next good sign from the partners would be permission to use long-range weapons on the territory of the Russian Federation. He emphasized that his country is lobbying for this among Western countries. Earlier, the representative of the Ukrainian operational group of troops, Tavria Dmitro Lykova told that Russia withdrew a small part of the troops from the temporarily occupied regions of Zaporizhia and Kherson regions against the background of fighting in the Kursk region. Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Sirsky, reported to President Volodymyr Zelensky that 74 settlements in the Kursk region are now under Ukrainian control. As Suspiln writes, 
The advance of Ukrainian troops in the territory of the Kursk region of the Russian Federation is complicated by resistance in the direction of the regional center. According to sources among the military participating in the Kursk operation, the defense forces will dig in at some borders. To try to counter Ukrainian gains, Russian troops have, however, continued their offensive on Pokrovsk and elsewhere in Ukraine's Donetsk region, according to the general staff of the Ukrainian army in one of the hottest spots on the war front where Russia is gaining ground. As Ukraine captured territory, Russian commanders initially played down the assault, insisting the military had things under control. But more than a week later, Ukraine now controls at least 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory.